Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here and welcome to DCS World 2.9.3 and Razbam Simulations F-15E Strike Eagle Module. Welcome to Tutorial 5, Air-to-Air -air Radar Auto Acquisition Modes. Following on from last time's tutorial where I showed you the EVR modes of the AN-APG-70 radar, today we're going to look at the Auto Acquisition Modes. These are tending to be employed when you're within visual range and they make it very, very simple for you to acquire a target automatically, as the name might suggest. Uh, you're tending to not use things like the TDC and the cursor. You're basically uh, pointing the aircraft towards your targets and the radar will automatically lock the first one uh, that uh, appears in range. Or if it detects multiple, it will pick up the one that's closest. There are a number of these modes, and they're mostly accessed from the Auto Acquisition switch. So, let's uh, quickly take a little look at these different modes. Uh, we have, in total, five different Auto Acquisition modes, uh, the first four of which are accessed using the Auto Acquisition switch, and the last one is automatically entered when you select the guns using the Weapons switch. Uh, they can all be exited by uh, using the, the return to search button, which is uh, depressing the auto acquisition switch. So as before, the auto acquisition switch has a forward, an aft, and a depress. And when it's in the center position and not actioned, it's uh, at that point neutral, basically. So it, it kind of, it's spring-loaded in effect and goes back to the middle when it's not in use. So uh, let's take a quick look at these different modes. Uh, if I go auto acquisition switch forward, uh, it wouldn't let me do that until I get command of the radar. Haha, <laughs> what a foolish person I am. So you'll see that I don't have the command bars on the radar right now. That was totally intentional, by the way. So if I press, uh, do a long press left on the castle switch, I now have command bars on the radar. As the pilot, I now have command of the radar. Of course, the, uh, the, the Wizzo uh, could have been doing things for me. Uh, if that was the case, it would tell me the radar was in use, and if I then did a long press left on the castle hat switch again, I would then take control of the radar. So now, if I do auto acquisition switch forwards once, I get super search mode. So super search is a 20 degree by 20 degree 6 bar scan, and it will lock anything that comes within 10 nautical miles. And you can see here on the radar display it says SS, and the currently scanned bar, uh, and you can see this big circle on the HUD, which is intended to show you the, the kind of search uh, area that the radar is currently searching. I could depress the auto acquisition switch, and I would return to uh, search mode. Uh, and you can see I've got some targets here, just a little bit outside of that 10 mile maximum. Now, uh, another mode that I can enter is if I uh, press auto acquisition switch forward twice in quick succession, I now get boresight mode, and you'll see boresight mode is indicated by this smaller circle. It's a four uh, degrees uh, circle. Anything that I point this at, it will lock up within 10 nautical miles again. So that's that mode. Again, depressing auto acquisition brings me back to search mode. If I push and hold auto acquisition switch forwards long, I'm going to get, uh, again, a four degrees circle, but this time it will lock anything within 40 nautical miles. This could be quite useful, you know, say we spot distant targets that are contrailing, uh, I could put this circle on them and lock them up. I'm going to see, actually, there was a group in front of me somewhere. I'm going to see if I can uh, grab one of them easily using this. No, I'm expecting I'm just not quite pointing correctly at them. Uh, again, depress auto acquisition switch. We return to search. I'll see if those contacts appear now. Ah, they're actually off to the left. That's why I didn't get them. So if I put put these contacts on the nose now, long press, auto acquisition forwards, and there you go. Actually, I picked that one up. So that's an example of a long range bore sight actually picking up a target. Again, I'm going to depress auto acquisition. And in the last mode that we can get to from the auto act switch, is a VTS or vertical scan mode. If I uh, press auto acquisition aft, I get the vertical scan. This is probably most useful in a turning dogfight. Uh, this gives me, uh, a, it'll lock on anything from positive five degrees above the nose 
to positive 55 degrees above the nose. So you're really, if you're in a turn, it's really looking ahead. And again, that's out to 10 nautical miles. If I roll this over, I wonder if I can actually pick up these targets. Nah, they're probably out with that 10 nautical mile limit. Again, depressing auto acquisition switch takes me back to search. The last one is the guns mode, and for that I need to move my weapon switch. So my weapon switch currently has uh, medium range missiles selected. If I move it down one, then I've got short range missiles, which in this case is sidewinders, and then down again, I get guns, and whenever I have the guns selected, I'm in gun auto acquisition mode, indicated on the bottom left of the radar screen. Uh, so this is a, a positionable um, lock-on, and it will uh, pick up anything between half a nautical mile and 15 nautical miles, and it's a 60 degrees wide scan uh, and 20 degrees uh, in the vertical. And it says that it's positionable, so if I, if I move my TDC... Oh, okay, I see what they're saying. I'm actually moving a cursor... Yeah, I'm moving the cursor on the HUD dis on the radar display here, uh, and so I, I can kind of pick out roughly where I want my target to be. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, now you cannot exit the gun's radar auto acquisition mode by depressing the auto act switch. It will remain active until I leave gun's mode. So I have to go weapons switch up, uh, and I'm now back in search. And if I go up again will be uh, medium-range missiles selected, and uh, I won't have that annoying noise. So, um, a couple more things that I'm going to demonstrate. I'm actually going to turn off from my targets so that I don't immediately auto-lock them. If I go into Super Search again by pressing Auto Acquisition Switch Forwards, one thing to note is this circle can be adjusted. So if I push the TDC all the way up, the circle will be positioned high in order to detect targets above. If I pull the TDC full down, it's back in the middle, full down again on the TDC, and I get it depressed down so that I can lock targets that are below me. Uh, I'm going to pull the TDC up again to put it back into its uh, original position. Now we're going to slowly come around on these targets that we saw before and see if I can lock them up. Nope, I'm going to return to search. They're probably just not quite where I think they are. Yeah, they're off to the right here. So they should be about on the nose here. Super search mode on, and let's accelerate. But yeah, that's it. Those are basically all of the modes. So you've got super search. As I said, it's 20 degrees by 20 degrees and a six bar scan out to 10 nautical miles. Uh, we have bore sight mode, which is a four degree circle. Again, out to four nautical miles. Long range bore sight, which is the same, but out to 40 nautical miles. Uh, VTS or vertical scan mode. It's positive 5 degrees to positive 55 degrees and out to 10 nautical miles. And in guns, which is anything between half a mile and 15 nautical miles in a 60 degree wide by 20 degrees high scan. Uh, and so yeah, AutoAC forward gives you super search. Forward again gives you bore sight. Forward long gives you long range bore sight. Aft gives you VTS. And then if we return to search and select the guns by going weapon switch down and down again, we're now in the guns mode. Oh, and I immediately got a lock in guns mode. What fun. Excellent. So those are all of the auto acquisition modes available to you in the F-15E Strike Eagle. Okay, thank you very much for watching, everybody. I hope you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. You also have the option of further supporting the channel by joining Deep Hack's Ground Crew. Thank you very much to those of you who've already done so. It's a small monthly fee, approximately the same as the cost of a cup of coffee, and it really helps me in creating this content. Uh, the, the names of those who are already in the Ground Crew are on screen now. Uh, you've got some small benefits in that we have a, a Discord server that we share together, and we also occasionally fly together from time to time. So uh, thank you all very much for watching. Fly safe, and I'll see you all next time.